Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do nothing. That means absolutely nothing. We don't live without God. We can't exist without him. We need him. So let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 142. And it reads, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And the way wherein I walked have they privately laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on back in, family. I pray that everybody is doing well. I pray that everybody is keeping up this fight of faith that we have in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ, courtesy of his Holy Spirit, sent it and inspired me to put this Bible study together, and that is... The righteous cry and the Lord delivers. So we're going to take a look at throughout this course of this Bible study, how when you really, truly are seeking God and when you walking in his righteousness and you trust in Jesus Christ, when you cry out to him, he's going to hear that. And, I, and I'm noticing this as I was reading, the Lord was just like dumping so many scriptures on me. When we really cry out to the Lord, he hears us. It's almost like uh, like a father or a mother when they child is crying. They're trying to find out what's going on. You know, so that's what God does because he cares about us. So when the ones that are considered righteous cry unto him, he's listening. And just because he doesn't respond to you right away in a way that you think he should, that don't mean that he's not listening. You got to remember, God's way is perfect. So let's open up this Bible study with Psalms 34 and verse 6. So let's read this. Psalms 34 and verse 6. And let's see what this says. Give me one second because I hate when my pages get folded up. I, I don't I don't like that at all. Give me one second. I'm trying to undo this page because I've turned too quick, I guess. Give me one second, you all. Sorry about that. But I got to undo this, this page. I don't like when my Bible get fold it up but uh okay here we go so it says verse six this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles so when we truly cry out to god he will hear us if we are considered righteous in god's eyesight he will hear us and deliver us and if you ever paid attention you know when you really want something answered from god those prayers become a little bit different from your everyday regular prayers. They are more earnest. You telling them the truth. You pouring out your heart to him. That's what we need to do, people. We need to always pour out our heart to, to the Lord, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, because we understand that with God, there is nothing too hard for him. And he can flip the re he can reverse our situation with the moving of his lips in an instant. So this is what we need to keep our faith in, crying out to the Lord. Sometimes it, you be actually crying, crying tears. 
because you are in pain or you need some deliverance from your our affliction. Let's go and take a look at this now. Let's skip down to verse 15. It says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. So the Lord is listening to the requests and the cries of the ones who are considered righteous. We're going to read the definition for what righteousness is in a few. It says the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So evil is something that's going contrary to the Lord's character or his law. Or his holy word. So when you do evil, the Lord is against you and he will not hear your cry unless you're trying to repent with a peer in a sincere heart. It says to cut off the remembrance of them from the face of the earth or from the faith or from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So there is nothing that we are going through or whatever we are experiencing that God won't deliver us from. And our God is great. It's nothing that he can't do. He can do all things. So this is what we need to keep in mind. And I thank the father in the name of Jesus Christ for giving us the understanding to know this. Because if we didn't have this, we would all be miserable and depressed and hopeless but thank god for jesus christ giving us hope through his word it says the lord is not unto them that are of a broken heart and save is such as be of a contrite spirit so when you humble when you relying on god for everything he gonna save you it says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of them all so that's what come along with this life people is affliction this life is full of pain and sorrow. But I want to show you something out of this KJV super giant print uh, Bible dictionary. I want to take a look at this definition for righteousness. And this is on page. Uh, what page is this? 1041. Let's go over here and take a look at this. Let's see what this says. So this is the definition for righteousness. This is a uh, I got to turn it sideways because this is. The words are so big. So righteousness, it says justice and rightness, conformity to divine law and morality. So in other words, it's obedience to God. Righteousness is grounded in the character of God because God is righteous. He's holy. And they got all of the scriptures here that's listed uh, uh, corresponding with the Lord's righteousness. It says he is righteous. His law is righteous. And he alone credits righteousness to man. So only God can determine who is righteous and who is not. Because when we had a spirit of God, this is how we are made righteous through the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. When we are obedient. OK, so the spirit of God makes us righteous. Faith in the blood of Jesus makes us righteous. It says all God's revealed will in Jesus's teachings is righteousness. All right. It says God demonstrates his righteousness perfectly in the proprietary death of his son. Jesus's death on the cross was ordained by God in his conformity with his character and accomplishes God's righteousness or righteous purposes with sinners. So once again, God is the one who justifies us or makes us righteous. So it's him is having faith in his blood. But we got scriptures to match or support our statement. Let's go over here to Romans three. Because over here, we, we support everything that we say with scriptures. We're not just talking a whole bunch of uh, uh, vain words and giving our opinion. We don't deal with that stuff over here. We deal with what thus saith the Lord, because the word of the Lord is what's supposed to be governing each and every one of our lives. Living by what he said out of his holy word. So let's take a look at what God had Paul write to the Romans over here. And he's talking to us as well. So let's see. This is Romans 3 and 21. Let's see what righteousness is or what makes us or declares us to be righteous. And it's none other than faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. So it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. 
being witnessed by the law and the prophets. You want to know somebody who was operating in righteousness without the law? Go back and take a look at Cornelius in Acts 10 and 1. A Gentile man had faith in God. He was doing what he thought was right, but he didn't have no knowledge of the true and living God. That's why the angel came to him and told him he got to go and talk to Peter because the Lord, he committed the word to Israel. Even Jesus Christ says salvation is of the Jews. So if you want to know how to get salvation, you got to go through the Jews or somebody gave some information uh, uh, to, to you about what, how to get salvation. And it came from a Jew. As a matter of fact, everybody that's in this book that has a book in this Bible was Israel. It was written by Israel. But anyway, verse 22, it says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. So this is what deems us righteous faith in Jesus Christ. We got other scriptures to support what we saying. Let's go and make sure. Let's go and see what Paul told to the Corinthians. These people were Greek. Let's see what they said. It says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. So God is our wisdom. He's our righteousness. He's our sanctification and redemption. So that's what God is to us. It says that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So that's over there in uh, Jeremiah 9 and I believe verse uh, 24. 24 through 26. You can go back and read that on your own. But Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He's our wisdom. He's our everything. And it makes perfect sense to us as to uh, uh, now why uh, uh, to see why we can't do nothing without him. Because he's our everything. All right, let's go and take a look at something else. Because it's him that's working in us to do these things. This is why we are righteous, because he gave us his spirit. He gave us of his Holy Spirit. Let's take a look, which is the Holy Ghost or the Comforter. So Philippians 2 and verse 13, and it reads, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God that's working in us. There is nothing better then submitting ourselves to the will of God and allowing him to use our vessel, which is our body, to do his will, to glorify him. So anyway, this is what makes us righteous. I just wanted to show you all what made us righteous. Now, let's continue on with this. Let's go over to Hebrews 4. Because we're dealing with how when we cry out to the Lord, he'll hear us. And every last one of us goes through things. We all are faced with trials and tribulations. This is why it's important for us to humble ourselves. Accept the fact that whatever it is we're dealing with is too much for us. And we have to cry out to God, even if that means actually and literally crying tears. That happens. Sometimes we be in so much pain and distress that we got to cry out to God. That's the only answer. He the only one that cares about us and will hear and deliver us in a manner that only he knows how to. So let's take a look at this. Hebrews 4 and verse 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest. So Jesus Christ is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood that will never be changed. It says that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. So it's a job to hold on to the word of God. It's the best job that you can ever have being a servant of God. It says, for we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So God, he can relate to the pain and the suffering that we face with down here on the earth because he was faced with pain and suffering. So he can relate to us. It says, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So he was tempted to sin on many occasions. But just because he was tempted, that don't mean that he was sinning. He was tempted to sin. As a matter of fact, Satan came to him, tempting him, asking him to make a stone bread. But he was tempting him. But the Lord overcame that temptation. 
You know why? Because he was committed to the father, which is what we need to be doing. We need to be committing ourselves to the father and crying out to him for our every need, whatever it may be. Whether things are going good or bad for us, we need to always keep this open line of communication to the Lord in heaven. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. So we got to go boldly before the throne of grace. Doing what? What are we looking for? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking from, from, for, for God to help from heaven. Send us some help. Matter of fact, let's go and take a look at this. James. Let's go and see what James had to say about this. Let's see what he said over here. Let's go to James 5. James 5 and verse 13. Because you got some of us that's sick. Some of us that have been sick and we have been healed. By the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sending his spirit and healing us up. And you got to understand something, people. God is the one who designed this body. He created this body and he knows exactly what we need and how to heal it and fix it and then restore us back to where we need to be. We got to rely on God for everything, people. James 5 and verse 13. Let's see what the scriptures say. It said, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. So if you're going through some afflictions and some troubles, you got to pray. God hear you and he care about you and he has and will consider everything that you say. He will consider it because he has our best interests at heart. He's our father, people. It says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. This is why it's so important. To have somebody to pray over you. This is why it's so important to be obedient unto God. Because the Lord ain't hearing the prayer of a sinner. We need righteous elders and members in the body of Christ to be obedient. Because when we need help, they can pray to God for you. And God will hear that. We're going to find out. It says in the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So when we calling out to the Lord, when we crying out to him. If you are sick and afflicted, God will hear that. Look at what he said. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We ask him for something that we have not received yet, but we know that God is able to provide for us. This is what God is. This is what he's doing. He's revealing to us. What we need to do. We need to be calling out to him. If we sick, it says, and the Lord shall raise him up. It didn't say the Lord might raise him up. It said the Lord shall raise him up. We know that God is not a liar. It says, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. If you did anything to get in that situation where you afflicted, if you committed sins, God will forgive you. Just like he told that uh, impotent man. Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon thee. I believe that was over there in uh, John 5. He told him that. John 5 and uh, let me see. Let me just make sure. I just want to make sure, people. Give me one second. I just. Uh, yeah, John 5. Yep. He had told that man, uh, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. All right. So uh, that's what we need to do. But you can go and take a look at that on your own. That was John 5. All right. So uh, verse 16, this is what I really wanted right here. Oh, back, back over to James 5 and 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. So we got to confess our faults one to another and we have to pray for each other that we may be healed. That's why every day, every single day, I do not stop praying for myself and my household as well as for the body of Christ and for everybody else that tune in to this Bible study program. Everybody, whether you tune in now or later, I pray for all of us. Because this is what God is requiring of us. And I love God and his people. That's my job while I'm here on the earth to turn the hearts of the people back to God. It says the effectual, 
fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God will hear you. It avails much. It'll get heard. Okay. It takes high priority. Matter of fact, let's go and take a look at a righteous king that cried out to the Lord when he was sick. And let's see what God did for him. So let's go over here to Isaiah 38. Let's go and take a look at this righteous king, Hezekiah. When he was on his deathbed, he was about to die. And we're going to find out how the Lord gave him a whole lot of years. 15 years is a whole lot of time when you're about to die right that day. So look at this. Isaiah 38 and 1, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, came unto him. And said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Whew, I know that had to be some some heavy, some very, very heavy news, but you gotta, as a prophet of God, you gotta go out and be able to tell this stuff to somebody. You gotta be able, you can't be afraid of what nobody is gonna say. You speaking on behalf of what thus saith the Lord. It's not about your feelings and your emotions, it's all about what thus saith the Lord. But anyway, it says, then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. So you see what he did when he got this bad news? He said, uh, Isaiah told him, hey, look, make sure you got everything in order because you about to die. But Hezekiah, he wasn't content with that. He had to go and cry out to the Lord himself, even though the Lord had gave him this report through the mouth of Isaiah and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. So even Hezekiah is declaring his righteousness to the Lord. He said, Lord, remember me. Remember, I was doing what you wanted me to do with a perfect heart. That's righteousness, people. It says and have done that which is good in thy sight. So he was declaring his righteousness because he only had the word of God to. Uh, uh, be a measuring stick for what righteousness was. So that's what he said he was walking in. The word. It says, and Hezekiah wept sore. He was crying his eyes out. Crying. You know how sometimes you, you can cry so much, your throat dry. Eyes get super small. They turn red. That's what he did. But look at what happened after he wept sore. He cried out to the Lord. What did the Lord do? Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, so the same one that came and delivered the first uh, bad news, he went after he prayed to the Lord. What did God told, put it on Isaiah's mind? Go and tell Hezekiah this. Go and say to Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold. I will add unto thy days 15 years. He said, I heard your cry. Man, that's a that's a, a huge extension of life. When you about to die right away and then God all of a sudden give you 15 more years to live because you didn't cry to him. Come on, people. This ain't in the Bible for no reason. It's just like that uh, Samaritan woman when she was crying out to Jesus. Jesus called the lady a dog. He called her a dog, but guess what? She humbled herself and she said, yeah, even the dogs eat of the crumbs of the master's table. You know what Jesus told her? Eat, man, your faith has saved you. You can go back and take a look at, uh, you can go and see that over here in first, no, no, John, John 15, John 15 and wait, not John 15. What am I talking about? Matthew 15. I don't know why I'm thinking about John 15. But uh, Matthew 15, you can read that at verse uh, 26. But let me just show you what he said. Verse 28, it says, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So when we got faith in God, no matter what the odds may look like, he going to hear us and deliver us because we have faith in him. That's what holds us up, people. Our belief in God, our belief in knowing that he can deliver. All right. So once again, we finished uh, looking at what Hezekiah did. He cried and the Lord heard him. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here and see what King David 
had to say about this. Psalms 40. So this is why we need to be patient. It don't matter if God, it don't seem like he listening to you right away. Be patient and wait for his salvation and his deliverance. Let's see what King David had to say about it. This in a word. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And what happened? And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He said he heard me when I was waiting patiently for him. Because we like babies crying out to our father. Waiting for him, waiting for his salvation. Knowing that he going to come, but sometimes it's painful. Let's go and take a look at this now. Psalms 55, is it? Psalms 55. Because it's just something about when we cry out to the Lord, he hears us. It says, Psalms 55 and verses 1 through 5. Then we'll skip down to uh, verses, uh, I don't know, we'll see when we turn the page. I think it's 16 and 17. It says, give ear to my prayer, O God. And hide not thyself from my supplication. So in other words, listen to me, Lord. Hear my request and don't hide from my request, Lord. Answer me. I need you to hear me. He says, attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. So he crying. He says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. This is why he's crying out. It says, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. So King David was obviously being oppressed. This is a psalm for someone who is being oppressed, and you crying out to God, don't you know he going to hear you? When you consider to be righteous, when you belong to him, he going to hear you, and he going to deliver. Just give him some time. It says, my heart is sore pain within me. And the terrors of death are falling upon me. So King David obviously thought he was about to die because of the situation that he was in. It says fearfulness and trembling are come upon me and horror hath overwhelmed me. Sometimes that happens with us. We get over. Uh, we, 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 we tend to be anxious. Start start worrying about things that we don't need to be worrying about. We need to be casting our cares upon the Lord. Because when we cry out to him, he will hear us. Let's skip down to verse 16. It says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. We need to have faith in him at all times, people. I don't care what's going on. We need to keep our faith. And that's not to say that we don't get weak. But once again, when we weak, Christ Jesus is strong. He going to come through for us. It says evening and morning. And at noon will I pray and cry loud and he shall hear my voice. So this is like an ongoing thing. He said at evening and in the morning and at noon, all of the time is what King David is saying. All of the time we got to be praying to him. He said, I'm going to cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. God will hear us, people. I'm not telling you all something that I'm just uh, uh, not experienced in. I'm telling you what I know and what we reading. We didn't been through these situations where we cried out to God and he didn't heard us. Matter of fact, he got a problem when people are afflicting other people, especially the fatherless and the widows. When you afflict them, God going to hear them. So let's take a look at this. I just want to show you this. This is in the law. Well, the whole word is the law. The whole Bible is the law because the law is the word of God. But anyway, this is. Back over here in the time of uh, uh, Moses, when he was letting the people know about what thus said the Lord. Let's see what he said over here about this cry. Because there's something about crying out to God. He will hear us when we are considered righteous, when we trust in him. He'll hear us. So Exodus 22 and verse 22, it says, Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Why shouldn't you do that? If thou afflict them in any wise... And they cried all unto me. I will surely hear their cry. God said, I'm going to surely hear their cry. I'm going to hear it. I'm going to listen to what they asking me for. He says, and my wrath shall wax hot and I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall be widows and your children fatherless. Whew. That's a heavy penalty to pay 
for uh, afflicting the fatherless and the widows. But do you see what happened when they cry out to the Lord? The Lord said he will surely hear. We can't mess around. Let's go and take a look at something else in Job 34. Let's go and see what Job's friend Elihu said about crying out to the Lord. Because sometimes we do things to get ourselves in a bad position. And we cry out to the Lord. The Lord let us sit there for a little while so we can learn a lesson. But nevertheless, when we truly cry out to the Lord, he'll hear us. Let me show you this. Job 34 and verse 21, it says, For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his going. So God is watching everything that we do, everything that we say. He know our every move. As a matter of fact, he know our thoughts before we even think in anything. You can go back and read about that over there in Psalms 139. But it says, There is no darkness nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. So you can't die and get away from God. You can't go to the darkest part of the earth and get away from God. He's everywhere. Let's get down to verse 26. It says he striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others. So God, uh, he'll crush the wicked people in the sight of everybody. He going to be glorified, people. It says he striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others. Because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. So that's why he'll afflict you when you turn away from God and you don't consider none of his ways. It says so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him. It is a dangerous thing to be afflicting the ones who are considered poor. It says, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. So when we crying out to him, he will hear us. That's what we need to do, people. We need to cry out to God. All right? So that's what we need to do. That's exactly what we need to do. We need to cry out to him. As a matter of fact, let me show you something else. Because the scriptures let us know. And I want to go over here while the Holy Spirit is putting it on my mind. I want to show you this because we live in a world where it's full of oppression. They don't they don't pay a decent wage or they don't pay a fair wage so that people can support themselves. The, the cost of living is rising up and the pay ain't rising with it. It's oppression. Let's take a look at this. Proverbs 29 and verse two. It says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So when you got a righteous ruler reigning over you the people are happy go back and take a look at what was going on in solomon's time king solomon everybody was happy it was plentiful but let's see what happened when the wicked are in, in control what happened when they in power but when the wicked beareth rule the people mourn uh-oh and you know when the people get to crying out and mourning god gonna take a look at it and hear what's going on you see what happened in sodom and gomorrah they were overly wicked. And the crowd of, of the uh, inhabitants of the city, it came up to the Lord. All right. So now let's go and take a look at this. The Lord was knowing, he knew about what was going on over there. Let's look at Job 35. Let's go back to Job. I want to show you something else over here in Job. Job 35. Job 35. And let's have a look at verse 9. Job 35 and verse 9, it says, By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. So when the wicked are bearing rule, they make an oppressed to cry. It says, They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. So this is why they cry, because the mighty or the one that's ruling over them is causing them to cry out to their God. That's why I suggest all of us all of us cry out to the Lord for all of the wickedness that's going on in the earth, for all of the things that's taking place in our city and ask the Lord to deliver us. You know where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of them. He hearing our cries. So let's keep it up, people. It says verse 10, but none saith, where is God my maker who give his songs in the night, who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth and maketh us wiser than the fowls of the heaven. God given us, God has given us his mindset. He ain't given the mindset of him to the animals. But for the most part, who is calling out on God when things are going out of order, when, when, when 
shootings happen or ki crime is going on. How come you hardly ever hear any of these leaders standing up and saying, man, let's turn back to the Lord. Let's humble ourselves because the things that we were doing were out of order. Let's humble ourselves and turn back to God. How many of our leaders are standing up and saying this? None that I saw. That's why somebody got to do this, people. I'm not saying it is me. But all I'm saying is that somebody got to do this. We got to call on the name of the Lord. Somebody has to put this word out. And let these people know that we need God. Somebody got to somebody got to stand up and let the world know God is the reason or the solution to all of the problems. He is the solution. OK, once again, it says there they cry, but none giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. So when you ain't calling on the Lord with a pure heart, he ain't going to hear you. Let's see what he said. He says, surely God will not hear vanity. Neither will the almighty regard it. So God said he ain't going to hear vanity. He ain't even going to hear it. You got to call on the Lord with a pure heart. As a matter of fact, let's match these precepts up now. Let's go over here to Psalms 145. Let me show you what King David had said about this. Psalms 145. Psalms 145. And let's take a look at verse 18. It says, the Lord is not unto all them that call upon him. So the Lord is near unto all of those that call upon him. It says, to all that call upon him in truth. When you are calling on him with a pure heart, when you truly pour out your heart to him, he will hear you. It says, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. There go that cry again. The righteous cry and the Lord delivers. That's what we need to do, people. We need to sincerely cry out to God and let him know everything that's going on and watch for him to do things. Watch for him to start changing up things. He even start probably giving you different ideas. You'll start looking at things differently. He'll put some people in your life. God can do any and everything. You just got to have the alertness or the awareness to see when he working and be able to act on your faith because faith without works is dead. It says the Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. So God will preserve the ones that truly love him. And if you love him, you're going to keep his commandments like the scripture said over there in John 14 and 15. King David said, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever that's everybody let all flesh this ain't just limited to israel all flesh let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever that's what we all need to be doing let's go and take a look at this uh, over here in psalms 107 because we about to start wrapping this up pretty shortly let's go over here to psalms 107 psalms 107 because we, we constantly face with trials and tribulations, people. But we got this Bible. Thank God for him sending his word and allowing us to see what was going on in time past and what's going to happen in the future. So that we can have a blueprint on how to live righteously. Thank God for his word. Psalms 107, verses 4 through 6. Let me show you what the what the Lord did for the children of Israel when they was wandering around in the wilderness. It says they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. So they was tired. But what happened when they got tired? Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. It's something about that cry, people, when we cry out to the Lord in our trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. So whatever it was that was plaguing you or bothering you, God delivered. He delivered them. He gave them food. He gave them, he gave them water out of a rock. Gave them manna. Gave them quail. And they still complained. Don't be like the children of Israel that complained in the wilderness, people. We see God's salvation every single day. We need to be thanking him for the fact that he's with us and having so much mercy and grace on us, extending his loving kindness toward us. Let's see what else the Lord do for us. 
Let's skip down to verse uh, 10. Let's read verse 10. It says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. So these people are locked up in prison somewhere. It says, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. So they wound up getting put in prison, bound up because you rejected God's counsel and his word. It says, therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. So you was afflicted, you was overwhelmed, and there was none to help because you went away from God. But what happened when you cry out to him? When, when life is just too much, what happens? Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. There's a scripture over in Hosea 13 and 9, and it's also in Hosea 14 and 1. He talks about how he said, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. So when we didn't messed up, we need to go to God so he can fix it and don't go that way no more. Be obedient unto the voice of the Lord. Follow after his spirit because his spirit will never lead us wrong. It will never lead us wrong. But if we operating in the flesh, you're going to mess up. So you see what happened when you cry to the Lord? It says, verse 14, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. So now he's giving them light. He's re he's freeing the captives. It says, and he broke their bands asunder. So he's breaking you from that bondage, whether it be spiritual or physical. God is able to do it. It says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works toward the children of men. That's what we need to be doing. That's why God is our God. Because of the things that he has done for us. That's why we trust in him. Because we got a testimony about him. Let's skip on down to verse 23 now. What happens with the people that's doing business in the sea and in the ocean? Let's see what they got going. Psalms 18. Oh, no, Psalms 18. I don't know. Let's take a look at verse 23. We're going to go to Psalms 18 right after this. It says, they that go down to the sea in the ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. So these people that's out there, the sailors and fishermen, they seen the work of the Lord. Let's see what they saw. It says, for he commandeth and raises the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. So God can speak the word and make the waves rise up to 50, 60, 70 feet in the, uh, in the air if he wants to. It says they mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. So they go all the way up and they come down. It says their soul is melted because of trouble. I, I bet it would be if you own a boat and your, your boat getting tossed around, rocking back and forth violently. And you out there on the ocean. I bet you would. Your, I bet your soul would melt for heaviness. It says they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man. And are at their wits end. They just don't know what to do. They back is up against the wall. They at their wits end. But what happens? Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. There go that cry again, people. They cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did the Lord do? And he bringeth them out of their distresses. That's why whatever we going through. Once we cry out to the Lord. When we sincerely pour out our heart to the Lord. Ain't holding nothing back. Watch how God come through. Watch how he come through. Whatever you was expecting or looking for, he'll bring it through like you wasn't even like you wasn't even imagine it. You can't even imagine the way God to do these do these things. God never told us to uh, figure out how he was going to deliver. He just told us that he would. So we got to keep the faith in his word, people. It says he make it the storm a calm. So that the waves thereof are still. So God can calm the sea. We saw that with uh, uh, Jesus when over there in Matthew. What was that? Matthew uh, 14. Matter of fact, let's see. Matthew 14 and 24. It says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. So anyway. The Lord, he can rebuke the sea. 
I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking for that one in Matthew eight. I'm sorry. That that was one when he was walking on the sea, but uh, Peter came out to him. But it was another one. This is the one I'm thinking about. Matthew eight. Matthew eight, and I just want to flash this on the screen. Matthew eight and twenty six, because Jesus got power over the sea. Uh, here we go. Yeah, because it talked about it was a, a storm on the sea, and then verse twenty six it says and. He said unto them, why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So all God got to do is just speak the word, people. Let's go back to Psalms 107 this time. Let's take a look at verse 30. It says, then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them under unto their desired haven. So. Now they happy because the Lord calmed the sea and he bring he bringing the people back to where they where they wanted to go, where they was a, a, a intended to uh, go in the first place. He's a, he's bringing them to their destination safely. It says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's what we need to be doing. Praising the Lord at all times, people. So now I said we was going to go and look at Psalms 18 right after this. So let's go and do it. So let's take a look at King David prophesying about what Jesus was going to go through. Let's take a look at this in Psalms 18 and let's read verses six through nine. And then we're going to look at an account of this. Then we got uh, one, one more scripture on this uh, uh, subject. And then we'll let it rest. But Lord willing, you all get the point. You see that you need to cry out to God. All right. So Psalms 18 and six, it says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. And cried unto my God, he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Now, let's continue reading this, because this is talking about when Jesus Christ gave up his life on the cross. He cried with a loud voice, and he gave up the ghost. And a veil was rent in twain, and there was an earthquake, and darkness was on the land from about the sixth hour to the ninth hour, right? But we'll go and take a look at it. We're going to see what it is. It says, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. So the father was dis He was upset. He was upset. Let's see what happened. When they crucified Jesus, he was upset. This, this is what's going on. This is the account that we're reading about. But anyway, it says he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. So that's why it was dark when Jesus gave up the ghost because the father had came down. Let's go and take a look at it. I'm not just making something up. We got the scriptures to prove it. Let's match these precepts up now. Let's go over here to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. And let's read verses 45 through 46. So it says, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabbatana. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And sometimes it seems like God is just so far away from us when we're going through our affliction. It seems like he's not here, but he's right there. He's listening. All right? So let's skip down now because this is what I want. Verse 50. It says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Now let's take a look at what happened because this is the exact same thing that King David prophesied about. In the Psalms that we just got done reading in Psalms 18 verses 6 through 9. It says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So when Jesus Christ died, a few of the people, a few of the saints that was had faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and in the Father, they woke up from the dead. This was a precursor to show us that the life of Jesus Christ makes us alive and that we will one day rise from the grave if we happen to fall asleep in Christ Jesus. It says, and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And he came out 
and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That was a testament to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, his power in the resurrection. Some people that was asleep, they woke up and them people went right back to sleep. But anyway, it says now when the centurion and they that were with them watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God because they was mocking, talking about if he be the son of God, let him come down off the cross. But they found out anyway. Jesus never deviated from the plan that the father had for him to say this great creation. He never deviated from it. He stuck to the plan. That's what we need to do. So one other place on this, and then we'll move on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. And I pray that these Bible studies are helpful. I know that, uh, you know, people nowadays got a short attention span, but uh, I, I can't, I, I just cannot. I, I can't, I got to do what the Lord tell me to do. I, I got to move by the spirit. So if it's an hour, 30, 45 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the Lord giving me, that's what I'm going to give to you. I can't do nothing outside of that. And the Lord said over there, what was that? Matthew 10 and 27. He said, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. So the Lord, he constantly giving us things. And that's what I got. That's why I got to pour it out to you. I got to share this with you all. All right. But anyway, Psalm 77, verse one, let's read one through three and then let's skip down and then we'll let it rest. It says, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me and the day of my trouble. I sought the Lord. So you see what happens when we in trouble. We got to seek the Lord. We got to call on him. The Lord told us, cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. He says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. He said, I was in pain all night and I didn't stop. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Say la. So that's what we be doing. We be complaining. We be overwhelmed. Feel like we got anxiety attacks. But all of that's eliminated when we give all our cares and our worries to the Lord. Once we cry out to him. Sometimes, like I said, we got to be sometimes we be literally crying tears. And when that happens, man, look, shh, God, he'll hear you. As a matter of fact, you know, I don't I don't tell too many personal testimonies, but I will say this. I cried to the Lord one time and he showed me a vision. And that was something I had never, ever seen that ever before in my life. Never seen nothing like that. I was crying to the Lord. I'm talking about literally tears and he showed me something. So those are the type of things that we need to hold on to. His testimony, the things that he said that he'll do for us. Because God can do things that's that we can't, that's, that's far out of our reach. God does and performs supernatural things for us. But let's skip down because sometimes it feel like God has abandoned us. He ain't there with us. Let's see what King David had to say about this. So he says, oh, no, this is Asaph. I'm sorry. This is uh, a psalm of Asaph, not King David. But Asaph, he says, will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Sometimes it feel like that. Like, man, Lord, what, why I feel like you abandoned me? Like, what's going on, Lord? It says, is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth this promise fail forevermore? Absolutely not. You're just being tried and you're going through your stage. You're, you're going through your trial period. We all go through it, people. But that's why we got to be here for one another to strengthen each other and lift each other up. We got to go to God, people. He's our source for strength and deliverance. He's our salvation. It says, have God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? Say la. Sometimes he'd be feeling like, man, Lord, what, what's going on? Lord, why I feel like this? Why I feel so down and out and depressed? Why do, why do I feel like this? And it's only a, it's an, it's an emotion or a spirit that's trying to separate you from God. It says, and I said, this is my infirmity. 
but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. He said, yeah, this is my pain, but I'm going to remember the experiences that God has brought me through. And that's what we need to do, people, when we down and out. We need to remember what the Lord has brought us through. Let's take a look. Verse 11, it says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. He said, I'm going to remember your works, Lord. I'm going to remember what you did in time past. And if we happen to forget, let's open up our Bibles and read about what God has done. And wait, because this Bible is alive. And it is very relative to the things that we go through in this day and age. This is why I'm a firm believer and a supporter of what thus said the Lord 100% to the day of my death. And even when I wake up from this death, I'm going to be I'm to still be holding on to this. And this is the mindset that I want you all to be in as well. It says, I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. We ain't never ashamed of God. Everything that we do now, it's all about God. That's our conversation. That's what we talking about. How the Lord delivered, how the Lord did this. It's all about God, people. Our conversation and our lifestyle, our lifestyle change when we truly in love with God. It says, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Nobody. Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. God is the one that do wonders and marvelous things. He do. He, he perform miracles. God does everything. So with that being said, that's the righteous cry and the Lord hears. So let's continue on with the mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. And the first thing that we need to do is confess and repent. But before we do that, so really the first thing that we really need to do is believe in the father and his son, Jesus Christ, coming to die for our sins. And we need to know that he loves us and we need to be obedient unto him. We got to start developing a relationship with him if we haven't done so already. Psalms 38 and verse 18. This is what we, what we need to do. Don't feel bad about uh, going to the Lord after you didn't did something wrong. That's what the Lord wants you to do. That's why he was calling out to Adam after Adam had failed or sinned against God. He said, Adam, where art thou? Man, we supposed to be in fellowship with God. If he can't see you, that's a problem. Well, he, he, he knows where you at, but he, you know what I mean? He, if you're not in fellowship with God, that's a problem. So anyway, let's see what King David said over here. Psalms 38 and verse 18. He says, for I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That's what we all need to do, people. We need to be sorrowful for our sin. Repent and don't go that way again. We need to uphold the words of the Lord to the highest regard. And don't turn from it. We got to be obedient to what the book is saying. So with that being said, I'm humbly asking the Father in the almighty name of Jesus to please forgive us of our sins. Grant us your grace and your mercy. May you please create within us a heart that's going to serve you perfectly so that after this life is over, we can appear in your kingdom and your salvation, Lord. So we ask him for prayers on behalf of the fatherless, the widows, the less fortunate. The wrongfully in prison, the ones that sick among us. Let's keep our sister Shantae in our prayers, our sister Oprah and our brother Vince and everybody else that is a part of the body of Christ. And also I'm praying uh, on behalf of the body of Christ and the nation of Israel, as well as for all of the brothers and sisters that tune in to this Bible study program. So with that being said, family, I really love you all so much. May the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Peace in Jesus name.